Good morning, everybody. Welcome and welcome back to my podcast. My name is Prince, and you're listening to the episode seventeenth. Do I sound happy to you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just feeling happier than usual. And I'll tell you why. First of all, the weather has been really nice for the last couple of days. Although weather doesn't have any role to play now, I feel, but it's unusual to have pleasant weather at this time of the year. Maybe, maybe it's the lockdown effect. But it kind of makes me happy to see improved Mother Nature. But what I'm actually happy about is that last week was very productive. There were quite a number of things that I got done in last one week, and I don't know if it happens with you as well. But when I make progress in something, I feel better. I did plenty last week, and one of the best things uh, was that I read this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I must have read it like for the fifteenth time. It's one of my favorites. It's written by uh, late Dr. Stephen Covey, who was an American author and businessman. And I don't care whether you're into reading or not. I can guarantee that you've at least heard about this book, because if you haven't, if you haven't, then I feel bad for you. You're missing out on something very, very important. But the good news is, the good news is I've got you covered. I've got you covered today. I was reading this book, and it occurred to me. Why don't I summarize this book to you in my own words? And you know, when I explain something, I use very relatable examples. And that's what I'm going to do over the next few minutes: provide to you a quick summary of the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Each habit with day-to-day examples, so it fully makes sense to you. And I also completely recommend to you that you buy this book, or borrow it, or get it online, whatever. But do read it as soon as possible because it is one of the best. Self-improvement books ever published. And one more thing: usually people listen to podcasts while doing other things. But if you could sit down for this one and focus for the next six to seven minutes, because you're going to get some really great learning out of it. Keep listening. Look at what's happening today. The government isn't doing anything good. Why am I not able to run my business? Oh God, why this is happening to me? Coronavirus is not my fault. While some people are really facing extreme problems, others are just reacting to what's going on and feeling shitty about it. At this point, let me introduce you to the circle of influence and circle of concern. These two are just concepts explained in the book. In simple words, everything in the circle of concern is just something you feel concerned about but can't do anything about. This is where reactive people focus the most. The weather is bad today, so they feel bad. Someone else got promoted at work; they feel bad, and there is nothing they can do to change those things. And then there is circle of influence. Everything in this circle can be influenced by you, changed by you. This is where proactive people focus. If they've got a problem, instead of focusing on the fact that they've got a problem, they focus on what they can do about that problem. For example, if maintaining healthy lifestyle was your goal this year, and now that gyms and fitness centers are closed, what do you do? Either you can react to this and put off your fitness plan until they're open, or you can choose to be proactive, meaning focusing on the circle of influence. Although I can't go to the gym, but can I go for a walk or a run? Can I eat healthy and still somehow maintain rigor on keeping healthy lifestyle? Habit number one: be proactive. Imagine you're on your deathbed and you're contemplating on what you could do in life and what you couldn't do. If what you didn't do is something you wanted to do, then all you will have is regret. And given a chance, you would want to go back and do that thing. Now you have the chance. Whatever you do, do it with keeping the end in mind, so that you don't have regrets. Because what's the end of not working out? Being fat, maybe some terrible disease will catch up, and then any of that we won't like. What's the end of not building new skills? Being out of work when the economy collapses, not being able to earn good money. So, what you do or don't do, make sure that you take into account what will eventually happen as a result. Habit number two is begin with end in mind. If I ask you what are the top most important things for you in life, then you will say something like my family, my health, my career, my business, etc. And then, if I take a look at how you spend most of your time, then it is watching TV, doing unnecessary stuff, which means there is a disconnect, a terrible disconnect between what's important to you and how you're spending your time, meaning your actions. Habit number three: put first things first. 
Now imagine you have a podcast and I have a podcast and we both have 1000 followers each. I invite you on my podcast and you invite me on yours. Suddenly we both get exposure to 1000 new podcast listeners and some of whom will then follow each other's podcast. This is called thinking win-win. On the other hand, if I think, oh, why should I invite you on my podcast and give you exposure to my followers? And by doing that, although you don't win, but I don't win either. So always remember in order for you to win, the other person does not have to lose. Habit number four is think win-win. The next habit is my favorite of all. In this habit, Dr. Kavi describes the importance of being understanding first and then to be understood. Effective communication uh, plays a major role in the success of any individual in personal and professional life. People normally spend too much time reading and writing but don't give much attention to listening, which is undoubtedly the key factor. For example, very often I catch myself in a situation when I'm listening to someone, I am only waiting for them to stop talking so that I can start talking. It's like being at the edge of the seat and as soon as I have the chance, I would start talking. If someone is telling me something, I go, no, 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 let me tell you something. That isn't effective communication and uh, this way it's very difficult to connect with the other person. Listening to someone with the purpose to understand their perspective is the best gift you could give yourself and the other person. Habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Now, let me tell you about an instance from last year. I picked up a project at work where I was required to automate a manual process. I had everything figured out in my mind and knew what steps I had to take to solve this problem. I created a project map that detailed everything from start to end. And I wanted the plan to go exactly that. I showed the plan to a few people and then someone from another team came back to me with a few recommendations. They suggested that I make a few changes to the plan else the project won't be successful. At first I thought, who is this person? He's not even from the same team doesn't even do the same kind of work. What does he know about my project? Upon inquiring, I got to know that the person has completed many similar kinds of projects in the past. And then I decided to ask him if he would be my mentor for this project. Not only did he agree, but also made a number of other significant changes to the way I'd originally planned to do things. And my project was successful in the end. This was a simple example of synergy. To tell you the truth, initially, I didn't vouch for anything he was doing because I would have never done those things. But in the end, I realized the importance of working together. The power of synergy can only be realized when experienced. If you want to do great things in life, then you can't do them alone. You need to get help from others. Habit number six is synergize. I don't know if you've heard the story of two men who went to the forest to cut trees. One man cut five times as many trees than the other person within the same time. And that was because each time he cut a tree, he stopped to sharpen his saw. This way he could chop them down faster. And this is the seventh habit in the book, sharpening the saw. It means taking the time to invest in yourself. And this is an important investment as no one else is going to do it for you. For example, meditation. Uh, is a great example of uh, sharpening the saw. Through meditation, you sharpen your mental saw so that during the chaos of the day, you can remain at peace and take better decisions. Just like that, before an athlete participates in a sports event, he spends enormous amount of time sharpening his saw, which is his physical ability. Abraham Lincoln once said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the saw. And on that note, we come to the end of this episode. Do let me know in the comments which uh, habit connected with you the most and if you would like me to summarize another book for you. I'm a regular reader of self-improvement books and I'll, I'll be happy to cover that for you. Also, if you're listening to my podcast for the first time, then please subscribe and follow and do share it with other people who might just need to hear this to make their day. And I'll be back with another episode next week. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy. Thanks for listening.